But now I'm found Was blind But now I see B.W. Knight and I'm here to welcome you to another viewing of the Old Fashioned Gospel Hour. We're glad today to have you tune in with us. Trust that you will stay with us for the next few minutes as we have, Ma have Mount Tabor with us today. And they'll be singing for us in a, little, in a little while. And we'll have a bunch of their children with us. And they're going to be singing a couple of special songs in a few minutes. So we would truly enjoy, and I know you'll enjoy it if you'll just stay tuned for the next few minutes. And also we're honored to have their pastor with us, Brother Monty Shoulders. And he'll be bringing the message in after a while. So we do ask you that you would stay tuned for the broadcast for the next few minutes. So we will say this, that if you would like an audio CD of today's broadcast, you can write the address or call the phone number that's shown on your screen and specify program 1657. One will be sent to you free and postpaid. Also, today's broadcast is coming to you by the authority of Mount Tabor Missionary Baptist Church located in Smith County, Tennessee. So without any further remarks, we want to go to the singers for some singing. And immediately following that, we'll be going to Brother Shoulders for the message.
Amen. We want to welcome you to the Old Fashioned Gospel Hour today. We're thankful that you tuned in. On behalf of Mount Tabor, we're thankful uh, that you're watching. And uh, we appreciate the kids and their singing today. It's such a blessing to see them uh, work and, and sing and sing praises unto the Lord. Today we uh, need your prayers. Those of you that know the worth of prayer, we ask you to pray for us. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity, uh, many of you uh, that are watching this program and do watch this program know, uh, know me and know my family and know that my granddaughter has been sick um, with uh, brain tumors that are inoperable. And I want to take this opportunity for just a moment to thank you all that's prayed and helped in any way you have. I want you to know how much my family appreciates that. And uh, felt like I need to take that opportunity to reach as many people with that thanks as I could. And ask you to continue to pray for my granddaughter and my family. We're going to take a reading out of God's Word today in the third chapter of the book of Romans. And if you have a Bible, I encourage you, read along, read after it, study after it. But in the tenth verse of the third chapter of the book of Romans is where we'll begin reading. As it is written... There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is some, or there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever, soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now righteousness of God, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ. And I skip down to the 28th verse there. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. I want to talk to you today about running from the law. Now, a law is made, and we understand that a law is something that is in our land. There might be some of you watching this morning that have broken laws. I think all of us have, have a, broke a speeding law or, or something to that effect. Every one of us has broken the law of the land. But what I'm talking about today is the law of God. And I want you to know that all of us have broken the law of God. That's what this said here, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, to be a sinner, you're a lawbreaker. That's what that means. You've transgressed or broken the law of God. And so we can agree today that all of us, and the Bible tells us that, but I prove it. That I'm a sinner. I break the law of God. And so Paul speaking here, I believe in writing the book of Romans, he, his conclusion of the matter was, talking about the law, was that the law brought us to know that we're sinners. And he said the conclusion is, is that a man's not justified by works or deeds of the law, but by faith. And I want to talk to you about that today, about, um, about you can either hide or you can seek. You have two choices today. And this, this day you might have uh, 
I don't know where you're at in life. I don't know who you are watching. That's the thing about television. We don't know who's watching today. We don't know what your circumstances are. But I know this, that man has been the same from the beginning. And we're the same today as they were in the Bible. And that we'll be the same uh, tomorrow in the future. No matter what changes come about, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So if all are sinners... We're all in need of a Savior. Now, there's a, a couple different type of people I want to, to uh, describe today, if you will. And one is a person that has broken the law and is a sinner, a lawbreaker. And they go about their life and they have broke even the laws of the land, let's say. And they've done awful things and they... Their life's miserable, even though they might try to act like they're having fun. But I know for a fact that those things of this world that are, uh, the Bible says are wrong and are, are not right, those things don't bring you happiness. Those things bring heartaches and compound your troubles from day to day. And many of you may have been gone years and your troubles just seem to keep getting worse. And, but we live in a world today that the Bible here said that the whole world would stop and become guilty. Now that's something today that nobody wants to do it seems like. That nobody wants to take responsibility for their actions they want to say, well, I'm this way because mom mistreated me or dad mistreated me or I didn't have a fair chance or I was poor or I was rich or I, was, uh, I didn't have the same chance that everybody else had. Now, uh, when it comes to God and breaking his law, I want you to know the first step to being forgiven of being to of transgressing the law is you've got to plead guilty you've got to come before God and plead guilty now we live in a world today where they say I'm guilty but and I want you to know God doesn't accept any uh, anybody that's not true repentance saying I'm sorry but or there's no excuses with God see you've got to come before God totally guilty Totally admitting that you're a sinner in the sight of God. Now, people today want to uh, compare themselves to others and say, well, you know, I'm not so bad. I'm not as bad as this guy over here, you know. Yeah, I might do a, little, a few little things wrong, but this guy over here, he's worse than me because look what they've done or she's done. And I want to tell you, we're not, uh, God doesn't compare us to each other. And the Bible said here that by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified. See, it ain't got nothing to do with how good you are, how bad you are, because the Bible says there's none good, not one. Jesus was the only one that was good. And so today, the first step of being saved and having eternal life is you've got to admit that you're a sinner. And the Bible says, Jesus said this, he said, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. You must admit without any buts or any excuses, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. And that's hard for many people to do because they, I hear them make excuses. Uh, uh, you see people even uh, that protect, uh, uh, there's people that smoke and have lung cancer and, and they'll say, yeah, but uh, there's people that don't smoke that have lung cancer. They like to blame it on something else, but we all know the truth. But it's hard to face the truth sometimes, isn't it? See, the, the truth is this, is that every one of you watching today, we're all in the same boat as human beings, that we're all sinners, and we all have an appointment with death. It's coming. And, and my opportunity and the time that I have today to spend with you, I would have you to please to just get honest with God. 
Because that's the first thing you've got to do is get honest with God of who you are. And I'm telling you, I got honest with God one day uh, when I was uh, uh, just a young man and I come to the end of my rope and realized that I was a sinner in need of a Savior and called upon Him with all of my heart and surrendered everything. I was a broken man and contrite before a holy God. Uh, listen, I wasn't bowing to any man and, and uh, I don't promote bowing to any man. I don't promote a man uh, leading you uh, uh, to, to a sinner's prayer. I'm telling you today, you need to go to the one who is the great judge. Uh, the one that's going to uh, judge you when death comes. And his name uh, is Jesus. Uh, uh, friends, he's sitting on the throne today uh, on the right hand of the Father. And he is going to judge us, everyone. And I'll tell you what... Uh, I don't have any righteousness when I'm judged, but what I have is the imputed righteousness that Jesus gave to me. And I want you to know today that I'm no better than you, but I'm better off than you if you've never been saved. I'm better off because of what Jesus did for me. Listen, we're all sinners. And I don't come here. Uh, there's another, I, that's one part of the people that I want to describe this morning that have been in, uh, it seems like, trouble all their life. And they've just been running and they've been trying to hide and they've been making excuses and they'll find other people uh, to just gather up with them and make excuses for everything in their life. And they uh, just are really miserable when they get all alone. And if you're alone today and you're miserable in your soul, I want you to know there's one that can clean you up. Uh, uh, there's one that can uh, uh, take away that sickness in your heart and give you peace like you've never known before. But you got to come to him and come clean. There's another type of people Paul talked about, and he talked about Israel. That was his people. And he said they go about, uh, in the Romans in the letter of the 10th chapter, it said they go about to establish their own righteousness. That's the other people. They're self-righteous. They look uh, to themselves and they try to uh, make themselves righteous by the deeds of the law. They try to do good things. And uh, you other people out there that I've just described that are in trouble and, and, and have been in trouble with the law of the land, uh, you might look at them as do-gooders. And I hear you talk about them. And, and the do-gooders are talking about, oh, look at them uh, sinners down there doing that. I want to tell you uh, that uh, uh, I don't care how much work uh, that you do, you can be in a church today and you can uh, uh, work in the with the benevolence and you can work with the uh, community and you can work with the young people and you can be Sunday school teacher and you can do all these good works and it ain't going to get you to heaven. You're in no better shape if you've never been born again than the person that's the lawbreaker out there in the law of the land. Yet you might uh, present yourselves as the Pharisees did that you might feel like you're better than them. I want to tell you that none of us are righteous. No, not one. Ain't one of us any better than the other. Friend, the only thing that makes me better off is what Jesus did for me. There's a lot of people out there, both sides bashing each other about, uh, you know, being, being good or not good. I want to tell you what, sinner friend today, whichever side you're on, I don't care if you're a religious sinner, or if you're a sinner that's broken the law of the land and maybe you're running and you're trying to hide, I want you to know that, that you, uh, the ones that are, uh, that are religious sinners, uh, I want you to know today that your hiding place that you found is religion. But religion won't save you. In the hiding place of the sinner that's in the uh, broken the laws of the land and have been in trouble and you're sorry you got caught and now you're just uh, trying to figure out how not to get caught again. Uh, friends, that's not a, a sorrow and that's not repentance. Uh, the Bible says that godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation. Now, what is godly sorrow? The Bible says worldly sorrow worketh death, but godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation. Now, 
Worldly sorrow is all that sorrow you have from this world and all these things of this world and all of these things that have gone wrong in your life and things that people's hurt you and people's mistreated you and you feel sad because of it's just turmoil and you go get involved with things that are wrong and the next thing you know you're still not happy because it just compounds. Everything just seems to keep snowballing. And those of you that are religious sinners, uh, you just keep trying to uh, build a wall uh, uh, to uh, make yourself feel better and you just keep trying to be more religious to make yourself feel better and cover up uh, the truth and the truth is is there's something missing deep down in your soul and you need God but it's tough to admit that isn't it both sides both extremes is very difficult to come to the truth listen to what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah I believe it is in the 28th uh, chapter of the book of Isaiah uh, the Bible says here, the, the prophet Isaiah, he says, Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we in agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. He says, Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you, for morning by morning shall it pass over, by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report, for the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it, and the covering narrower than he can wrap himself in it. Listen, sinner friend, you're trying to find a hiding place. You're building up this wall of, of refuge of lies. You seek refuge in a, a bunch of lies and you won't come to the truth. Listen, until you become guilty before God and come to the realization, the reality, and the truth about your situation, then your uh, destiny, Lord, is going to be... Uh, a place that God said he didn't prepare for mankind, but he prepared it for the devil and his angels. Friends, it's a place called hell, and it's burning with fire today. And I'm telling you that this is a preparation place in this world that we live in today. It's a place to get ready. And these people, he says, you're, uh, he'll come and he'll, uh, their refuge is under falsehood. They have hid. Are you hiding under falsehood today? Listen to me, sinner friend, today, I don't care what your situation is. I don't care if you're a religious sinner or you're a, a sinner that's just been in all kinds of trouble of this world. Maybe you've been in jail. Maybe you've been divorced or you're going through a divorce and you're troubled uh, because of this world and all the things of this world. Maybe you've got children. Uh, uh, maybe you're a young person that's, uh, uh, that's having trouble and uh, you never felt love in your life. Uh, listen, I'm telling you what, uh, uh, Jesus uh, is full of grace. He said in the book of Romans there, he said, where a sin did abound, grace did much more abound. I'm here to tell you today that there's the grace of God. He's reaching out to you this, this day, and he wants, he loves you, and his, he's full of grace. That's unmerited favor. See, you can't be good enough to get there, but you do have to get honest with him. Uh, you got to come down before him and seek him with all of your heart. You must come to him broken and contrite. He said, Come unto me, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto your soul. Listen, you want to find rest? I'm not talking about a good bed, but I am talking about rest to your soul. That's what he said. Is your soul in trouble today? Is your life a mess? Oh, you might, you might be fooling everybody around you. You might think everything's okay. 
But I'm telling you today that God can fix it up on the inside. When you get it fixed on the inside, I'm going to tell you, it'll change your life on the outside despite of circumstances. Friend, listen, I want you to be saved. The people that do this broadcast, uh, it's all about, we want you to be saved. We want you to have eternal life. Uh, uh, Friends, if we was giving away uh, uh, something free today, you'd be lining up to get it. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus has uh, already paid the price and gave, made a way for you to go to heaven. Uh, uh, friends, it's a place where there's no sorrow, there's no heartache, there's no trouble. And friends, it's forever with Jesus, uh, uh, the one who gave his life for me. You have a friend in Jesus. Uh, listen, you, would you come? Bow down yourself. I can't tell you the words to say it's between you and God. But you're going to have to seek Him with all your heart. But you've got to first come clean with Him. Lay all that baggage down at the foot of the cross. And just call on Him with all of your heart. If you'll do that, friend, let uh, don't give up seeking Him until God gives you something in your heart that you know about. God can let you know you're all right. Uh, I don't trust no one else uh, uh, with your soul. Uh, I don't trust a preacher or anybody to tell you you're all right. Friend, God's capable of letting you know you're forgiven. Come to Him and seek Him while you have time. Thank you for hearing me today. You've been watching Elder Monty Shoulders, pastor of Mount Tabor Missionary Baptist Church located in Smith County, Tennessee. If you would like an audio CD of today's broadcast, you can write the address or call the phone number that's shown on the screen and specify program 1657. One will be sent to you free and postpaid. Also, today's broadcast has come to you under the authority of Mount Tabor Missionary Baptist Church. Again, this is GW Knights, and may God bless you. May you have a great week in the Lord.